Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi with Jellyfin. And uh, a headless setup, so we're not going to connect the monitor. However, you might want to connect the monitor if something goes wrong to the Raspberry Pi. But yes, so we're going to have an external USB drive as well. So let's go ahead and insert the SD card in the computer. For me, it's on the back of the monitor. Okay, so let's go ahead and download the Raspberry Pi OS image. I'm downloading the light version for headless setup. I'm using something called disks here, and we have to be careful here to select the correct drive unless you want to overwrite your hard drive. And select the image, start restoring. So now we're going to enable SSH, so that we have to mount the FAT drive. I think on Windows what you do, you will just insert a card once more and it will come up. So here's the boot partition. Let's go ahead and uh, change directory to that. Now we're going to do sudo touch SSH password. That's it. Now you have uh, SSH enabled in that image. Now we're going to add the Pi user, which Debian has removed for some reason. So sudo nano user conf control shift V control X enter. I'll put some link in the description if you're going to find that. So now we are going to you have to unmount or eject the SD card before you pull it out. So let's go ahead and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Use the blue ports there. Quicker access or USB 3.0. Get another cable. Then let's attach the power. Right, so on Windows you can use something called Angry IP Scanner. Uh, I'm on Linux, so I will just use Nmap. And from there I have to set 13 as my uh, subnet. And there it is, Raspberry Pi, and you find your IP address. There are thousands of ways of finding these out. You can set a static IP address on your router. But since there are more routers than uh, people in the world, so <laughs> we will just uh, do this. So, yes, so go ahead and log in for the first time. And the password is Raspberry, basically, Raspberry. Okay. So, I'm going to change the password. I guess there's several ways to do this as well. I do sudo su because then I become root and then pass wd pi. Change the password. For this demonstration, I just wrote one, two, three, four, <laughs> but you should use a better password. There you go. I logged in and the password was working. So you use control D to exit anyway. Okay. So let's download Jellyfin. I'm going to use the Debian version. And we're just going to copy paste this. So control C on that one. And then in that window, control shift V enter and I'm just gonna fast forward this takes a bit of while that's good control shift control click that one and you get into Jellyfin so congratulations if you can see this you have installed Jellyfin so we're gonna go ahead and uh, sorry for the Norwegian language here I will change it in a bit you have to go through this first project process if you skip that you don't know your password so what you need to do then is basically um, you can install Jellyfin once more and you will get the wizard so, so you can set your password and now we're gonna add some media so I skipped the wizard step so what you do is you just go into dashboard libraries and here 
So as you can see, there's no USB drive. So let's mount it. I'm doing this off the cuff, that's why it's a bit unsynced. <laughs> LSBL key. We can see SDA1 there. It doesn't have a mount point. We need to see the ID, BLK ID. It's a file called etc slash fs tab. That's where we're going to mount it. So let's go ahead, grab the part UID. And we're just going to uh, sort of mimic the last part UID line there. Uh, you have to take your time here because we also need to add the mount point. Uh, unless uh, or else the Pi won't boot. So also X4 is my U. It will probably be NTFS. You will see that when you do the BLK ID. So let's go ahead and reboot and see if that works. If it doesn't work, you have to connect your monitor and see. You can also change that file on a computer as well, the FS tab file. So, but uh, it's important to get this right, so, <laughs> yeah. So let's add some media. I'm just copying a file there. So let's go ahead, choose your category, click folders, and there you go. <laughs> There's the mounted drive. So, so, now the reason why I use this um, fstab file is because when you reboot, Linux will load fstab and mount, so and also then uh, Jellyfin is happy when the hard drive is permanent. So let's see, haha, <laughs> it's working, cool. Welcome back to another video. Actually, this How looks better than the uh, we'll see <laughs> player <laughs> for some reason. Or so, I don't know why the frame rate is faster on my old computer. Right. Very they weird. Have, they have special dials. They are used for protecting against EU. Okay. So I'm also going to just quickly show you Jellyfin on my s mobile phone. And uh, it's the same process. It's connected via Wi Fi to my router, which is also connected to my Raspberry Pi anyway. So let's go ahead and log in with that password we made, which is 1234, just for demonstration's sake. But you should uh, choose something wiser. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see if it works. Ta -da. Let's start plugging That's Jellyfin streaming to my phone as well. Now just a note. Um, <coughs> you can also add it on your TV. So if you have a Android TV with 4K, you can actually stream 4K video, no problem at all. Now, if you do that to your computer, which is not 4K, then will, the Raspberry Pi will try to transcode and it will not work. So you will have to have a device that supports the media such that the Raspberry Pi can just pump out the data without transcoding because it doesn't have the power to transcode. But uh, I didn't have any problems with 4K video on uh, my Android TV. So, yeah, I'm really happy about that. So that means I probably can't see 4K video on my phone. I will have to down convert it or something like that. So, but I don't need that anyway, so <laughs> for myself. So thank you for watching. I hope that was help helpful. Uh, it was a bit fast, but uh, I hope uh, you'll find it useful. Okay, thank you for watching.